A quick session on applying fountain fills in the Corel Draw application. We're working next four fountain fills are throughout the different versions in Corel Draw, so this training really applies to any number of the different versions in Corel Draw. What I want to do is first take a look at a basic rectangle. We have a graphic here. We'll do some work with this later on in the tutorial. We'll apply some fountain fills for effects in this simple graphic. By the way, all of this art is available for free at artamp.com. Go ahead and check that out. If you need profound or deep training in the graphics application Corel Draw, go ahead and check out the Power Training Advanced Artist. 37 hours of training, very reasonably priced. I want to start out with a basic rectangle. So I'll come over here to the toolbar and I'll left click on the rectangle tool. Come over here and Corel Draw on the left hand side and I'll just left click and drag down release and I'll create a rectangle. Now this rectangle down here on our status bar we can tell that there's no fill but there's a black outline so we can at least see the object. If I come over to my color palette on top of the red chip for the color red in my color palette left click one time now I've given that rectangle object a red fill. Now, when we're dealing with fills in Corel Draw, there's a couple of different ways we can get to and change our fills and manipulate our fills and apply things like fountain fills, etc. The first place I want to take a look is in the Object Properties Docker. And left click that, and that'll open right here. Now, if you don't have that available in your workspace, all you have to do is right click on your object, and you can come down here, and there's Properties. Now, you can't see that. If I bring this up a little bit, click a little higher, maybe we'll be able to see that. Right there is Properties. You can also go to Window then come down to Dockers and left click here and that'll bring up your Properties Docker also or you can hit Alt Enter as your key command. Now looking at this you can see that my Object Properties Docker has a number of different things. I've got my outline properties, different information about the object, but I'll always be able to get to my fill properties and change and manipulate my fill under the tab for this little fill bucket here at the top of the Object Properties Docker. Now under here you can see we've got a uniform fill or a solid fill. If I left click on the arrow here, hold down, and come down here. I don't have to hold down, just release and come down here to the fountain fill. And select OK. You can see now I've got a fountain fill. Well, what's a fountain fill? It's a blend from black to white. So I can get to that through my properties darker, but I can also get to that over here under the fill bucket in my toolbar. If I left click on that, go down to the second one, fountain fill, now I've got my fountain fill dialog box and that is also showing the same fill now this is set up as a two color but I can go to custom in here and change that and I can also adjust my midpoint change directions and a number of different settings that we can work with there's also a number of presets here I can come down through my presets and select something like let's say gold plated select OK as you can see there select OK and my preset has changed this to a preset that was available in my dialog box. So go ahead and go back to that dialog box here and we'll go from a two color to a custom because we changed it to a custom. If we go back to two color then we'll just go from gold to gold. Now once I've got custom you'll notice that I can left click on this little arrow, slide that and my fill will move. If I come over here into this little color palette I have available in the dialog box for the fountain fill, right click that'll change that color to that red. And if I change this back to a two color, we'll go just back to the orange and the orange. But if I go here and I left click on this arrow, from two, change that to a white. Come here to the from, left click that to a black. Now you can see that. Come up here, change from my conical to my linear, as you can see there. And then left click on this little arrow, it's called midpoint, and change it. I'll change the spread of that. But to be honest with you, I really prefer to work with another tool when I'm dealing with fountain fills in Corel Draw, and that's an interactive tool. Even though we've got our fountain fill dialog and the object properties, I prefer to, and I'm going to select OK here. I prefer to work with another tool here in the toolbar called the interactive fill tool, and we'll left click on that, and then we'll notice also that we get a properties bar that's associated with this. I'm going to go ahead and left click on these two arrows here and collapse this docker. Now from here I can change with this properties bar interactive two color fountain fill right now and you'll notice that this will change when I start to add some colors even more but at this point what I want to do is you can see here at 36 we've got our fountain fill midpoint and I can go ahead and left click slide up and down here and change that we'll change this to 51 you'll see that that changes we've got our fill drop down here as you can see here and I can change this to a blue 
which that'll change that to a blue color. And then over here, I've got the white. If I want to change this to, say, a lighter blue, I can go from a darker blue to a lighter blue changing here. But what we can do with the interactive fill tool is we can do something as simple as, I'll, let's go ahead and left click on this dark blue here, and I want to change that to a red. I can left click and that'll change that automatically. I can also go ahead and we'll left click and hold down from our color chip and drag, holding down our left mouse button, come over top of this color chip and release and we'll change that to a red interactively. I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm going to get another dark blue, say 40%, not blue, black. Left click, hold down, drag, you'll see I get that icon change. Bring that over top of the color chip here on the right and release that. And now you can see I'm changing these colors. But I can also left click, hold down on the white, drag that into my workspace. Bring that on top of the line that you see dotted line across the object. Release that. Now I've got a white chip in there. If I left click and hold that down, I'll change the position. I can also left click on the end chips of this interactive fill tool and change the angle and the width and make many adjustments with this on both ends as you can see there and I can bring in let's say another gray here and we're creating like a silver metallic type fill here and I'll just left click and bring in you can see that we can start to fill out and get type of a metallic type of effect there in dealing with that so this interactive fill tool is very good to work with and you'll notice that it's also changed now to multicolor fountain fill and we've lost our midpoint tells us our angle and we can go copy fill and different things here and we're set up for linear. Now let's say I've got like this skull here and I want to do something with this. This is a uniform fill but I want to add some depth to it or make it appear to be rounded. I can take my interactive fill tool that I have here, left click, bring this over here and just start at the top, left click, hold down, drag down and now this is going from white to white and what I want to do is I'm going to bring some darker color in here left click hold down we'll bring this in here now I've got a linear fill here and I'm gonna change this to a radial fill now I've got kind of like a gray skull with a white highlight at the top I'll left click down here at the bottom and move this in you can see the effect I'm getting now down here at the bottom I might want this a little bit darker left click on this darker 70 percent black I'll bring this down to where this white is and fill that and now you can see I'm starting to get kind of like a skull color. Now I don't have to work with black and white. I could go ahead and change this color. Let's say I wanted to make this kind of like a bone color so I could left click and drag this over here. Now I've got that kind of bone or cream color in there. I might want something a little bit darker down here at the bottom. Go with this kind of off pink color. Now you can see I'm getting kind of a, an effect with a bone color that has a white highlight at the top so I've changed that color there. Now I can take with my interactive fill tool still selected, let's say I wanted to fade out the background of the starburst. I could click on that and I could left click, hold down and drag and I can see I'm going from a gray to a white and now that's going to blend in with my page color in the back. So I'm only going to have my starburst color at the top of my graphic. And if I wanted to make some adjustments on that, if I wanted to change that top to 100% black, left click and drag that over, release in that chip and now that's 100% black at the top. If I wanted to change where the midpoint is or where the transition from black to white is occurring, left click and hold down on this little white bar and slide that and it worked just like that. Or I could bring in left click, drag over a darker black chip right here and now I've got 100% black. Left click, hold down this white and drag this up here and you can see how we're affecting what's going on with that fade in the background color. Now let's say I wanted to go with one of these arrows and have some fade going on there, some fountain fill, left click on that, pull out, we're going from black to white here, just like that, do the same thing over here. Now, if I wanted an identical fill here, so if these two are identical because they're balanced in design, I could click here, come up here and select copy fill properties, I'm going to get this black arrow, come over to this other fountain fill, left click, one time hold down, now I've got the same fill in this object over here. So this is just a brief tutorial introduction to working with fountain fills in CorelDRAW X4.